I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will try to understand the concepts of annuities. We will describe what annuities are and how to derive a formula to calculate its future value. For that purpose I have taken a very simple and general example. Uh, the question here is $100 is invested at regular intervals in an annuity that earns I% percent compounded at the end of each interval. What will be the future value FV of the annuity after N intervals? So that's the question which we are going to explore. Now in this question we have the definition of annuity itself. Annuity basically is a series of equal deposits or payments made at regular intervals simple so here that series of regular deposits is hundred dollars and they are made at regular interval and what we have done here is we have made that payment interval same as the compounding period and that makes this annuity a simple ordinary annuity correct so we have coincided the payments with the compounding period right so instead of writing that the interest rate is 5% 10% or the compounding period is yearly bi-weekly weekly daily we have taken it general that is let's read it again hundred dollars is the amount invested at regular intervals that means it's an annuity right in an annuity that earns I percent to make the formula I percent compounded at the end of each interval okay so deposit deposit is being made at the end of interval and compounding of interest is also being done at the end of each interval right then what will be the future value of the annuity after n intervals right so that will give us the general formula okay so i'll actually make a timeline here to help understand the situation and then we'll move on from there so let's say this is the timeline for us here we'll mention the compounding periods so let me write down the compounding periods on this timeline um, so when you start we'll call this zero right so and then there we say one two three four and so on right till n so we can write this as uh, let me write down in different things. So let me mark and then it will write down, right? Okay. So, so these compounding periods, let's say we start now, zero, one, two, three, four, and then this will end at n. So we have n, n minus one, n minus two, n minus three. Right? So these are the compounding periods. So you can see that there are at the end first compounding period second compounding period third compounding period right so we have n compounding periods here and what are the payments being made here we'll write down the payments payments will be hundred dollars correct so hundred dollars is the payment which is being made at the end of each compounding period so this hundred dollar is not made here so zero is made in the beginning do you understand at the end means after one compounding period it could be one year it could be one month depending on the compounding period which is there in your example so in our case we are using a general case so one so hundred dollars at the end so that is the end right so so hundred dollars is being deposited regularly at the end of each compounding period so that's what we mean so that's how this hundred comes on this timeline right so that is the payments deposits which you have made right now each deposit is going to earn interest right so so let me write down 
it will all earn interest so amount of each payment at the end of the term will be how much so this is principal amount kind of right regular payments are in general will right and the amount which they appreciate to or they they will add some interest on it right so we can write this here on this side as the amount of each payment that is how much they are worth after n periods of compounding of interest that is what we're trying to say right so so for example the last one which you just deposited this one which you just deposited it is not going to earn you any interest right so you'll get back the same amount which is hundred dollars right so you'll get hundred back because you just deposited it has not earned any interest and so you get hundred back but at the amount which you had deposited last has been there for one compounding period right so now interest for one compounding period will be applied to it correct so interest rate is i so this will appreciate right so this will be 100 times 1 plus i right so that is how it will be so one time the interest will be applied on it on the amount which you had deposited two compounding periods back will be sitting there for two time periods and therefore compounding interest will be applied on this and this will appreciate right so this will be 1 plus i times 1 plus i so will be square do you get the idea and the, the likewise we can see the effect of each payment made right so so what you get here is amounts which all these investments appreciate too right so so in general you are seeing here that the amount deposited becomes 1 plus i to the power of n where n is the number of periods in which it has been sitting for right so so if you go back and continue you'll get for four for example hundred one plus i to the power of so how many compounding periods has this been there right so it is n total is n so it is n minus four right <clears throat> you could treat like this uh, let me show you this is like i write this as, in terms of n i'm writing okay one plus i n minus n do you see n minus n is zero so something to the power of zero is one this could be n minus one right so, so n minus n minus one so i'm ready n minus n minus one do you see that so n minus n will be zero minus one minus minus times minus one will be one so you get one here do you see that so that is the general formula right so it is kind of like this so likewise we could just write up to here so i'm not just because i'm saving some space we'll derive the formula rest of the space so this is 100 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 right so it is n minus whatever number here it is okay because it has been sitting there for those many compounding periods so likewise you will see that each payment which was made has earned a compound interest at the rate of i percent so one plus i each term to the power of as many terms it has been sitting for so what you observe here is that we get all these amounts and some of these amounts is the future value correct so so the future value or the total amount let me call this as future value 
is sum of all these amounts, right? So it is R, which is 100. We say this amount in general is R. I've taken a value of 100 plus 100 times 1 plus I. So you could start writing from each one of them. So this, this is 0. This is 1. This was 0, right? Plus 100. 1 plus I square 2, 3, 4, right? Plus 100. 1 plus I cube. Plus so on till the last one, which is 100, 1 plus I to the power of N minus 1, correct? Till the last one. So add all of them. So what do you observe here? We observe that this is a geometric series, right? So, so this is a geometric series. Where the first term is 100. So we say A is 100 for us. And it's being multiplied each time by 1 plus I, right? 1 plus I. And how many terms are there? 0 to n minus 1, so there are n terms. So we can apply the formula of geometric series to add all this, right? So that's some formula we can apply, correct? Okay? So formula for geometric series is S of n, if there are n terms applied, is A times R to the power of n minus 1 divided by R minus 1. Correct. Now, in our case, A is 100, R is 1 plus I, and there are n terms. So, if I apply this formula, then I can write down that the future value, that is sum of all this, is indeed equal to A, the amount being deposited is 100, times R to the power of n. And R is 1 plus I, 1 plus I to the power of N minus 1 divided by R minus 1. R is 1 plus I, so 1 plus I minus 1. Do you see that? So now we can simplify this, especially the denominator, and write down our formula. So we could write this as... 100. Within this bracket, there are two brackets. Let me write them in different square brackets. 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 divided by i. 1 minus 1 is 0. So if $100 is being deposited, then the future value is 100 times within brackets the amount by which it appreciates each term, 1 plus i, to the power of n, the number of terms it has been sitting there for, minus 1 divided by i, the interest rate, correct? So that becomes your general formula to apply. Now in case I say that the investment is r dollars, so, so let me write down a general formula here, if regular investment so we use investment or deposit these two terms right if regular investment or deposit is r dollars let's say in that case the formula will become we we'll replace 100 with r is that okay so we'll replace 100 with r and then we'll write down our formula let me use a different things just get merged r within brackets 1 plus i to the power of n minus 1 divided by i right so so that becomes the formula for future value so all these amounts will appreciate and that is the final amount which will get at the end or after n intervals of compounded interest is it okay so that is how we can work it out now, as an exercise, what you can do is, you can take up some values of i and n, right? For example, you could compound it after every six months, and i could be, let us say, 
5%. And then use the formula to get the future value. Difference of future value and the payments which you have deposited will give you interest. So from this, if I take out 100 times N, because 100 has been deposited N number of times, I will get the interest earn by doing this deposits at regular interval of time. I am Anil Kumar and I hope you understand how to draw a timeline and how to use the geometric series concepts to derive at a formula and calculate the future value of the annuity. I am Anil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe my videos. Feel free to ask questions. Thank you and all the best.